Welcome to Chatsunami. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Chatsunami. My name's Satsunami and joining me today is none other than the one and only fantastic Scottish wrestler himself, Martin McAllister. Martin, welcome on the show. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, how are you doing today, Martin? Yeah, alright. I guess as we'll introduce, I was at a show last night, so feeling a bit more, you know, worse for wear, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> Still happy. How are you? Not too bad. And it's funny you do mention that show because as you alluded to there, well, obviously you were there. You were on stage <laughs> fighting the good fight in the ring. That was my very first show at Iron Girders. So before we go on, do you want to tell the audience listening a little bit about Iron Girders? Yeah, sure. So uh, Iron Girders gym is Scotland's only wrestling specific gym. And we also are lucky enough to be able to host shows in said gym so our wrestling students come in and me included among them we get trained up in the art of professional wrestling and eventually we put on shows and these shows take place in our gym and it's really just a fantastic you know family and atmosphere I love Angus gym but yeah the shows we always do are really good we take place in Glasgow usually about once a month but we also run shows in other areas so keep an eye out for us if you're nowhere near Glasgow keep an eye out for local wrestling shows wherever you live because there's some great great wrestling out there no absolutely and I can echo that enough I have to say because as I said this was the first Iron Girder show that I've been to I've been to other wrestling shows don't get me wrong but yeah last night on the 24th of June 2023 Iron Girders held a memorial match for Stephen Brown and they were of course raising money for Ayrshire Hospice and can I just say the absolute atmosphere last night the whole gym was absolutely packed with fans with supporters what I was really surprised that not in a bad way but there were so many families there shouting out the names there were definitely a couple shouting your name out of course it just seems like quite a very supportive environment doesn't it yeah it's a tremendous atmosphere and it's funny because every show you go to will have totally different atmospheres but i do really believe that it's good as we are like a huge big family so so many people know each other's families we all know each other so there's like a lot of support a lot of love in that room especially yeah, for last night for steven but one thing i, I do always like to say is, i think it's funny is that most people at wrestling shows aren't wrestling fans it's i always think it's funny seeing those people kind of become unglued i don't know what the, what, what the correct turn of phrase is here but you know the people will come in and they'll be kind of like oh yes i'm here for a good time and then by the end of it you know they'll be over the moon screaming and clapping and just having a good time so yeah it's always tremendous that i'm good for that especially no absolutely because what i found quite cool as well was the fact that you've got you know your usual reserve seating everybody sitting down but then you've also got like a group of people as well just around the ring and what what I found great about that was the participation because don't get me wrong I'm not saying it's like a band to my birth but you know it's the fact that the fans were also interacting they were getting high fives they were shouting out and of course being the absolutely fantastic wrestlers that you all are you had that kind of back and forth with one another and I thought that was great the whole participation was just absolutely amazing that's like the big thing that separates wrestling out from any other form of entertainment whether that's television or even like theatre or I guess other sports is like there's that you know no two wrestling shows are ever the same and part of that is because someone at the front of the crowd will start cheering for you or someone will start giving you grief or there'll be a wee boy at the front of the crowd who's absolutely going nuts like when the people are coming out and trying to high five everyone yeah that's, that's kind of what makes wrestling so unique I believe you're never going to see the same show twice and for the wrestlers out there we never have the same show twice because the crowd just changes everything no absolutely because the last time I saw you in the ring was at was it earlier this year or was it last year where you were at Acme Comic Con? Yep, so September last year we were at Acme Comic Con. It was a long time ago now. <laughs> it really was, wasn't it? Even there, there were so many families gathered round the ring and they were all shouting your name, they were shouting the name of their favourites. And I do love the fact as well that, you know, you've got that split, you've obviously got your, I don't know if this is the right term, hero wrestlers. And then on the other side, you've got your villain ones, you know, the ones you boo 
you hiss and they come out and they glare at the crowd and everything. <laughs> it's just it's such a fantastic experience overall. But before we go on to how you got into wrestling as a whole and your, well, let's face it, your love of wrestling, <laughs> what inspired your persona for wrestling? Yeah, so if anyone's never really come across before Martin McAllister, I am kind of the lovable underdog hero, but unfortunately I've never won a match. So it's kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of half what I've tried to present and half just real unluckiness <laughs> and I've never managed to win a match and it's now become a thing that everyone knows and keeps count of how many losses I've had so as of recording 42 losses and zero wins but I'm trying to like be inspired by a lot of the big wrestlers I'll probably mention when we chat about wrestling and then also superheroes and anime heroes as well that's kind of like a, I draw a lot of inspiration from them and yeah chasing that big win is the crux of what I've been doing recently yeah any day now any day now I think it's on the horizon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, staying positive. Yeah, exactly. But speaking of staying positive and using wrestling as the role model, as it were, yeah, how did you get into wrestling in the first place? This is funny because I actually don't really remember. I think it's just, it's always one of those things that's just always been there for me, and I've kind of gone into it and dipped out of it over the years. One of my earliest memories is genuinely me arguing with my brother on the way to school one day about who was better, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock. But I don't remember any wrestling, watching wrestling at that time, but I must have known because I had an opinion on it. <laughs> well I didn't I, just, I was just really strongly opinionated on it who knows but yeah I drifted away from it for a while in school and then came back to it when I was at university and then I got really back into it when I moved down to England for a year it was like a whole brand new place that I was in I didn't have any friends didn't know anyone and so like I ended up watching a ton of wrestling <laughs> to fill that time up but it's been with me ever since I guess at some point it became more than a hobby I guess what was the turning point for you though because I mean there's obviously going to be a lot of wrestling fans listening to this and following you on social media who are maybe fans of wrestling but as soon as they hear the first body hit the ring and everything they <laughs> might go oh maybe that's not for me what was it that made you think right okay this is what I'm going to do I'm going to become my own wrestler it's funny because I don't really remember if I'm honest so to kind of take you back it was actually five years ago yesterday I started my wrestling journey I went into the Glasgow Pro Wrestling Asylum Training School for the first time five years ago and I don't really know why I signed up in like March of 2018 and didn't get in my first class until the June but I was not in a good place mentally and or physically and my plan was to like get in shape over the three months and I just obviously just got worse as it were both physically and mentally and it wasn't until I turned up at the school and to give you a sort of an insight of where I was the very first day I actually had to like sit on the floor and pull my shoes and my shoelaces all up so I could actually tie my shoes because I'd stop tying my shoes because my stomach was so big so I would just you know put them on I wouldn't I couldn't like lean over to tie my shoes so I'd like sit on the floor and like straighten out my legs to do it, it was where I was when I first started wrestling and yeah it just kind of started that I think like, there's like a turning point about three weeks in so I was kind of like uh you know I'm going along and I'm like this is fine I'm, I, you always as a wrestling fan you always kind of want to see that peak behind the curtain and a lot of people come in and maybe do like one session or for example I good as Jim now does a one-to-one training session so you can go in with a coach and some people they come in they go that's fancy the ring's not a trampoline it's actually solid wood <laughs> it's wooden metal I don't need to do this anymore but I got to this point about week three and one of my coaches basically pulled me aside and said you sure you want to be here you don't look like you want to be here either buck up your idea and go to the gym or don't come back effectively which is a little harsh to hear out loud when you say it like that but it was kind of the tough love I needed at that point that kind of ultimated me and I obviously chose to keep coming back to the stage that they basically can't get rid of me now <laughs> so uh, yeah and that's it's become life changing for me really has and I mean that is inspiring to hear because there are probably a lot of people out there listening and I mean myself not with wrestling of course so I'm not even going to attempt to pretend to be like like, oh yeah, I've been in the ring. No, no, I've been beside the ring. There's a big difference there. But the fact is, in life, you know, there are a lot of things that people want to go for and everything, and there are those hurdles that you'll get, whether it's someone, as you said, someone more experienced, like your old instructor, or people like that who say, oh, maybe it's not for you and everything. So, first of all, like, congrats for actually pushing through and having that fortitude. But what would you say to aspiring wrestlers would you say the same thing that they should try their best and try and push through you've kind of alluded to the thing about the ring
thing, and I, just, I want to bring that up because it's, it's like one of the specific ones. Yeah, a lot of things in wrestling, especially, there's going to be tough days, and simply because your body doesn't want to do a lot of these things, <laughs> naturally. So, I mean, a lot of times in wrestling, you'll be landing on your back, you'll be getting thrown, you'll be doing a flip and trying to land on your back, you know, things like that, and a lot of rolling, a lot of, you know, you, you saw the your show last night, a lot of hard impacts, either from people punching you or from landing or whatever, and, you know, there's days where you wake up and you're like, oh my god, you know, what am I doing? Why is this my hobby? Why didn't I pick Tiddly Winks? I think it's the same with any hobby, and it's like, you know, something that is your passion, and, you know, we spoke a lot about, you know, when you come into the podcast and things like that as well, and it's, there's going to be some days it's like, oh man, what am I doing? But if you love something, you'll try, you'll find that passion. It might not work all the time, you might need to take a step back, or you might need to whatever, but it's all about, and I think you'll probably agree with me in terms of your hobbies as well, but it's it's about consistency over super passionate outbursts. It's like, you know, let's get a schedule, let's become a consistent person. And that was a big change for me, was that kind of mindset shift from, oh, I'm going to go to the gym to become a better wrestler, I'm going to train these days, and I, you know, I became a consistent person. And I think that's kind of what helped me a lot, and I think that's really the same for every hobby, I would say. No, I 100% agree with that it's like one of these things you put on a cv isn't it yeah and you're completely right because i mean i myself have had those bursts of oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i have daydreams of oh what will happen if the podcast is popular kind of thing and then some days and again it's not so much a fault in people it's just it's more of a human reaction where it's like some days might be harder than others you might think uh, as you said they are like oh what am i doing why am i falling face first the only difference is you do it in the wrestling ring I just I'm clumsy like that <laughs> yeah it is one of those things that you do have to keep working on you're right it is that sense of consistency because I can imagine there must be a lot of people who enter wrestling and then they drop out because they have a somewhat idealised version of it yeah 100% and just a wee factor in that when I first started wrestling I joined like a beginners class there was 20 people in that class and I'm the only one left so that's a you know 1 in 20 odds there that's a really really impressive to be fair <laughs> it's like the hunger games all over again <laughs> yeah because when you see things like wwe or any of the other major organizations for wrestling you always see these massive superstars that you know they've got a massive following and everything and then once they move away from wrestling like for example the rock or i mean even john cena this is showing my age mind you <laughs> but you know you see these people who go from wrestling and then they have a success successful movie career they see they have all of these uh, as i said adoring fans and things and you know at the end of the day it's a bit like me and podcasts and i suppose i see all these really famous podcasters going up the charts and everything thinking wow i wish i was like that but i mean starting at the bottom is always the hardest bit isn't it it's like trying to climb at your own pace and get to a spot that you're comfortable with but at the same time allow that scope for improvement yeah Yes, and you're always improving everything. I, I think one thing that I always like to kind of pick up on, especially when you are starting out with anything that's public facing like podcasts, so for me, the wrestling is you've got that personal connection, which you just don't get at a high level. And you know that yourself. You you have fans that you've spoke to and people that you can communicate with. You know, they influence you as much as you can influence them. And it's kind of amazing to like see people turn up for you in that way. And it's definitely one of the things you mentioned it last night about those people cheating for me. And that honestly means the world to me because I probably know who half them are. And not through outside of wrestling, I've not become you know they weren't friends with me before that I've met them at the shows and we've garnered that emotional connection to me and me to them and I also think that's such an amazing thing at that size but yeah you're right and you get those people and eventually they'll get this huge fan base but I think there's that definitely that personal connection will get lost over that scope yeah it must feel weird and I mean that's in the best way possible weird but when you see your face on the promotional material you see people wearing your stickers and things like that (laughs) does that still feel weird or are you kind of used to it now no it's still weird it's a very unusual feeling one of the weirdest things is when you see yourself and you're not expecting it you know what I mean so if I get like someone tags me on social media and they're like oh so Martin McCarthy last night and it's a picture of me it's like oh, okay I, I get that but sometimes people won't tag you or it'll be a promotional material for something or just this morning I got a notification saying a new wrestling match is getting put up on the Iron Girls YouTube and I opened YouTube and it's just my face it is the thumbnail it's my face and someone else's face I was like oh my goodness that's me <laughs> and it's such a weird sensation to see people talking about you and like another example would be like on Twitter after a show you know, people would just be talking about the show and it's suddenly you'll see your own name like oh Martin McCaster did this last night it was great and blah blah it's incredible it's truly amazing to see it because it's not just me shouting into the void <laughs> you know what I mean the void shouting back but I mean that is amazing to see the progress you've made because as you said five years ago 
yesterday, as of recording this episode, but five years ago yesterday, the fact that you decided, right, I'm going to essentially change my entire lifestyle, you know, and make that transition from wrestling fan to wrestler and go over the ropes to, yeah, wrestle your way to make a name for yourself. And can I just say, all of you at Iron Girders, yourself included, definitely deserve that accolation, that being known really within, even though it might be a relatively, like, I wouldn't say it's a small community because you know what social media is like nowadays, even oh, though the gym was packed and everything, there might be some people who couldn't make it that night or, you know, for whatever reason. So they'll still be following you on social media thinking, oh, what did Martin McAllister get up to? Or, for example, one of your other fellow wrestlers, like, what's Levi doing? Or, you know, like all of those wrestlers, what are they doing? I think it's absolutely fantastic because every so often I'll see one of them pop up and I have to say I give them a like as well. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> like, I really like that because, as you said, it does seem like just this really tight knit community. I think that's great because it is kind of one of the benefits for, and again, I'm not saying anger is small by all means it's got such a prolific following especially with organizing these matches and charity events and things but the fact that the audience does seem so tightly knit together you know it's like it's not really a feeling you get with bigger shows for example the last major other than yourselves of course but the last major wrestling match I went to was in Stockholm and that was of course with the WWE and you know don't get me wrong it was an amazing spectacle it was just so theatrical and everything but you know it's like it's almost like you're just one person in a crowd of thousands and that yeah. whereas with Iron Girders you do feel as if you are part of the experience well minus the wrestling but of course I feel <laughs> as if there's some legal issues there but yeah you're part of that experience it's not just I'm just going to sit and watch the show and everything you are going to be cheering and especially the announcer last night he did a fantastic job of hyping up the audience you know introducing each wrestler and what I love as well is the fact as well that there's just so many different varieties of wrestler you've got your good guys your bad guys you've got your male wrestlers your female wrestlers it's just everybody's welcome if they're willing to obviously put in the work for it and they're willing to make a name for themselves it's just, it's absolutely fantastic to me as someone who obviously isn't as au fait, as it were, in the wrestling sphere, but I just think it's fantastic to see. Yeah, and that, that's one of the big reasons I'm so in love with wrestling, and I've never, you know, since I started rewatching it, you don't get bored of it, it was because I've seen every show is different, but every, even in every show, there's always something for everyone, I think. You know, I think last night's show, just to use that as the example, but the first half of that show, the half that I was on, there was four very different styles of matches with, like, so many different wrestlers involved, teams, there's single wrestlers, there was high flying acrobatics there was, um, the match that I had was a much more sort of ground and pound style, I think it's just really fascinating that, and like you say, yeah there's so many different types of wrestlers out there, so many different people from all the different backgrounds and stuff I just wanted to pick up on something else you said about the difference between WWE and Iron Girders or just any sort of smaller show, I think it's really cool is the WWE shows are these huge productions, you know, they basically have a essentially on par with like the biggest musical acts, you know, like a Kiss or a Metallica or something like that, you know, they'll have like that level of production crew with them, who are making rings, building stages, there's all these videos playing and then you get something like Iron Girders where it's, you know, it's just what we've got there's like speakers and just like curtains hanging up for the wrestlers to come out of and I just think it's like they're both amazing in their own ways, just all these different variations of wrestling, all these different variations of like who you can see, yeah and I just think that's one of the big cool things about wrestling. No, I completely agree with you as a viewer and someone who, as I said before, definitely not in the ring, it was just such a fantastic experience and all I can say is like again, if anybody is in the area and they get the chance to see one of these Iron Girder shows I would wholeheartedly recommend it because it is such a fantastic experience the wrestlers there, yourself included of course, absolutely talented as all can be really, so yeah I would wholeheartedly recommend it but before we wrap up and I once again say go watch an Iron Girder show, what would your advice be either to fans or 
people wanting to get into wrestling, like what would your advice be to them? Open up Facebook or Eventbrite or Twitter or whatever and have a look what's happening near you right now, whether that's, you know, a company like Angerda's or, you know, a bigger company, maybe WWE's coming to town, but you do get what the sort of wrestling time is for a company like Angerda's is indie wrestling, is what they cannot call it, it's independent, try find your nearest indie show, because it will be a very similar thing to what we're describing with Angerda's, where it's this, you know, younger wrestlers, it's this low production, it's this just high atmosphere time. So yeah, that that, that would be my advice, is just have a look and see what's coming to town. And I, I, I genuinely believe, I love wrestling and I love watching it on television, but for me, there's nothing better than being in that crowd and seeing the reactions and being part of that atmosphere is, to me, is a whole different level from watching it. But you don't get commentary when you're there live, which people always get shocked by. <laughs> it's like, you're like, wait, where's the commentators? But yeah, if you're in Glasgow, come see an Iron Goddess show, but wherever you are, just have a look what's local and go in, bring some friends and just have a good time because it's a lot of fun if you let it be. I can only co-sign what you said there. Just absolutely go check it out or, as you said, check out what's near you if you're a wrestling fan because, yeah, you really won't regret it. It's an experience, I have to say. Whether it's a big show, a small show, you're always going to get a fantastic experience. So definitely go. But without any further ado, Martin, thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Thank you. And thank you for coming along to the show last night. It was really good to have you there. Oh, no, it was fantastic to be there. And I know, judging by that match, that, yeah, great things are going to come in your future. I mean, I've not got a crystal ball. I don't <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, no, I'm more than confident that all of you are going to have great things in your future, whether that be a championship, whether that be a win or anything, really. Small victories, big victories at the end of the day. It's going to be fantastic to see where you guys all go in the future. So honestly, I can't wait to see that. Thank you. Appreciate that, mate. And yeah, before we wrap up, where can these lovely listeners at home find your content? So if you want to keep track of me and all things wrestling, you can find me on Twitter at M McAllister. So M M A C A L I S T A I R. Or on Instagram, just as Martin McAllister. I'm also on TikTok as well, which is a lot of fun. So if you find me there, you find me there. The other place, best places to find me is in and around Glasgow. But if you follow any of those social media links, you'll find where I'm next wrestling. And um, you can come along. So I hope to see you at a show in the near future. And I would wholeheartedly reinforce that. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> go see Ian Gertrude. And of course, by extension, go see Martin McAllister. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for listening to this episode. If you would like to listen to any of our other episodes or any other interviews we've done, this, of course, is the very first wrestling interview that I've done <laughs> with someone. First time Martin McAllister's been on the show. Exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> any likenesses to Craig C is unfounded. Yes, there will be no slander of such. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone at Iron Gertrude is listening and is like, well, yeah, maybe I want to come on Chats and Ami, please feel free to reach out. But yeah, if you want to check out old episodes or old interviews, then you can catch us at podpage.com forward slash Chats and Ami, where you can also send a message to us via our contact page. Please feel free to reach out. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Chats and Ami, where not only can you get exclusive episodes, but but you can also get episodes a week early. So please feel free to check that out. I also want to give a huge thank you to our patrons, Robotic Battle Toaster and Sonia. Thank you so much for supporting the show. But as always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated.